I'm Alwyn from CogniKids and I'm just going to give you a little snapshot of my experience of the importance of communication, uh, what I've learned uh, over the last two to three years. We are obviously manufacturing, designing and manufacturing our products. Um, we work with a variety of different factories uh, and a lot of the time we would have a number of them working on the same project. So trying to communicate with them is absolutely key. What we have learned is that we really need to schedule in factory visits. So China, we work with a number of factories in China. So um, dealing with um, China factories is very much relationship based. They love to build the relationship um, and feel that the, this is for the long road, so that you're not just going to put one order in and then move to the next cheapest one. We very much have put a lot of energy and time and effort into building our relationships with our manufacturers. So we would actually meet them about three times a year. Uh, and one of those times we will go to China for um, kind of face to face meetings, see the factories, see some of the other people that we would be maybe contacting via email or Skype. Um, also WeChat, we've just become uh, WeChatters. So that's really great because everybody in, on there is on WeChat too. While we do the factory visit to China once a year, we then also meet our manufacturers and schedule in visits and appointment times with them at different trade shows that we know that they're going to be at and we're also going to be at. So we meet in Germany and then we also meet in the States as well. Um, and we definitely, we will kind of, you know, have our appointment and get our business stuff done with them. And then we will also then go for dinner in the evenings and just foster and build that relationship. It's super important um, and you tend to then get a much better service, not necessarily better price. Um, you still got to haggle every time they come back with a quote. You've got to go, come on, are you serious? Let's do better than that. Um, and they will. That's just how they, how they operate. Uh, you've also got to, and one thing that we've learned very much is that they are very honorable people, but in your contracts with them, that you actually need to put in what they are not allowed to do. So while we would put in kind of what, what is expected and delivery dates and so on, um, if you don't actually put something in there that says you are not allowed to copy this, you are not allowed to supply this to other people, you are not allowed to whatever, um, they, they may do that. Uh, and that is not anything that's kind of out of badness from them. It's just that they're, they're so honorable that if you actually put in those clauses, uh, that they won't actually do that. So that's kind of a little hint and a tip if you're uh, dealing with Chinese factories. We're super lucky. We've got the most amazing factories. Uh, we are dealing with the same guys for the last uh, two years and we absolutely love them. I have come through rough patches with my original suppliers. Um, so I've gone through two others that didn't work out. Um, and you know, you just, you learn by, I suppose, by mistakes as well. But if you can try to find referrals, um, that's really good as well. So if you know somebody else that's manufacturing with the factories. Also, um, the art of communication as well. Uh, you know, if you kind of say something and you're under pressure in an email, it can be misinterpreted. So even recently, we had a product that was being manufactured in the UK, um, that it was like six months behind delivery. And I had lost a huge amount of orders because we weren't able to get it into stores in time. Uh, so, you know, I kept emailing and calling and emailing and calling and I was told just, you know, bear with us and so on. So one day I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go over tomorrow and see what's happening. So unannounced, I went in, I arrived at the factory, saw that our piece wasn't even in a machine. It wasn't being used. I was just sitting on the side and I was thinking, oh my goodness. So I met the manager and I just said to him, look, you need to see the whites of my eyes. You need to understand that I'm a single mom. I have two children. My house is on the line. Every single penny I've ever earned and saved is on the line. And you know, kind of like you're messing me about. I need to get stuff out of your factory as soon as possible. And so while we've been waiting for four months for 2000 units, um, within a week we had the 2000 units out of the factory. When I just showed him the person behind the company um, and behind the emails and just really laid it out um, and was very honest. A lot of people I find tend to not be particularly open and honest when they're under huge pressure. They kind of try to go, oh, it's fine, it's fine. What I actually find um, for me works really well is when I'm very honest and I just say to people, look, 
if you don't give me this, I don't have a company. So I need to hit these. I need to get this opportunity. I need to, you know, kind of like, I need you to work with me on this. Um, and when you're like that and you're open and people see really kind of the passion and the emotion and everything else that's involved in it for you, they will, um, they will definitely work with you. And if they won't, then my advice to you would be to cut those ties pretty quickly.